I think that an outsider would never have uh, an opportunity to, to have things explained to them because our culture believes that unless you are going to be, become a part of something, a little bit of information is dangerous. If you can't know enough about what's going on, you're better left completely in ignorance. Just observe and feel what it's possible for you to feel of what you're seeing. And a lot is possible just by viewing. And if you have a personality that respects visually and orally what you have a chance to experience, it's quite fulfilling and quite self-explanatory. You see the joy that's reflected in the person who is singing and dancing in front of you. When the tribe comes out to bring in the catch, they retrieve the fish from the nets in the spiller. The men on top of the platform have been living in the cabin on top of the trap for the past three days. The supervisor and a few others go up to help them to raise the net in the spiller. The men in the boat, known as a scow, will go inside the spiller to catch the fish which are trapped. The top platform here in the spiller is about 18 feet above the men in the boat below. This section is the movable part of the trap. The men make a smaller and smaller pocket out of the net by turning the reels to lift it. Then the men in the boat start hauling the net over the side. All kinds of fish get caught in the trap. Even crab get in. Somehow they just keep crawling until they get into the spiller. As soon as they start getting the fish up to the boat, those men must reach in with their hands and start catching fish. It's hard work, but the men yell at each other and joke as they pull them in. The size of each type of salmon will vary from year to year, but it takes practice and strength to grab any wiggling fish and throw it in the boat. There will be a lot of bottom fish, and during part of the year you get sturgeon. The ones which won't be processed by the fish company or eaten by the elders are thrown back free into Puget Sound. Even at this time of year, during the summer, the waters of the Sound are cold. The men in the boat below wear rubber protection around their legs, but can't avoid getting splashed with the chilly water. When all the fish are removed from the net and the boat below returns to open water, the men above will lower the edges of the spiller again. This work usually goes on from late April until November. In the fall, the trap is taken apart. All the wire has to be removed, and every four years, the web net is replaced. Indian people intend to remain on what land they have left and to use it well. When the Point Elliott Treaty was signed in 1855, Chief Seelf of the Duwamish tribe reportedly said it this way in his speech. Every part of this soil is sacred in the estimation of my people. Every hillside, every valley, every plain and grove has been hallowed by some sad or happy event in the days long vanished. The very dust upon which you now stand responds more lovingly to the Indian footsteps than to the white man's, because it is rich with the dust of our ancestors. And when the 
last red man shall have perished, and the memory of my tribe shall have become a myth among the white men, these shores will swarm with the invisible dead of my tribe. And when your children's children think themselves alone in the field, the store, the shop, upon the highway, or in the silence of the pathless woods, they will not be alone. At night, when the streets of your cities and villages are silent, and you think them deserted, they will throng with the returning hosts that once filled them, and still love this beautiful land. The white man will never be alone. Let him be just and deal kindly with my people, for the dead are not powerless. Dead, I say, there is no death, only a change of worlds.